Um, can we start with a, with an obvious one uh, for this weekend? Obviously, the stadium is going to be full again. We know what uh, the principality is like when it's full. Uh, how excited are you and the rest of the playing group to actually have a full house once again? Yeah, I think um, you know I've been involved um, in a few games there, and this, they're always special occasions. Um, I think you know the start of um, lockdown in um, the last eighteen months, two years. Um, you know, we didn't really see the forecast of what it was going to be. So to have the fans back um, is, is going to be very special for a lot of us. Um, you know, like I say, and I know what it's like. There's a few guys that haven't played um, with a you know a crowd of that magnitude in the principality. Um, and, you know, we're all rushing, um, seeing fans and, and getting back to you know, semi-normality with, you know, full house. You've not had any games together to get up to speed so far. So how tough is it to go straight in against New Zealand, who've been together a while? Yeah, we, we find ourselves obviously coming off um, the back of the domestic uh, early start of the season. Um, we're obviously aware of the, the run they've had. Um, but we've, you know, we've been fortunate to have two, two weeks together uh, and do as much as we can. It's always a, a you know, an ask at the autumn and a difficult time of year for the uh, international calendar because it's the first one out. But uh, we've done all we can in the first two weeks and uh, the squad has enjoyed and, you know, we had a relatively heavy week last week, but we've, um, you know, enjoyed all the same and, you know, Wayne and all the coaches have been clear in what they, they want from us. Looks like either way, whoever gets the number 10 shirt, it's going to be a great story. Gareth Anscombe coming back from, from injury or, of course, um, Rhys coming back from, from his time in England. I mean, the number 10 shirt in Wales is is so revered. Either way, it's going to be a fantastic occasion, isn't it? Yeah, hugely. I think credit to both guys, um, you know, that have, have been here in the jersey and obviously had a, a spell out for different reasons um, and gone the long way round uh, for... for for all intents and purposes, um, but to see them back in the fold um, is, is great. Um, I think it's strength of character first and foremost, but to have those players, uh, players of that quality um, vying for that position can only bode well you know, for the squad and our performances. Just finally from me, obviously, Brody Retallick and Sam Whitelock in the opposition, you've been going up against them for a while now. What is it that makes them as a pairing so good? Um, I think... Um, you know, I haven't played against them a few times. I think they hold the record now for the, the most appearances of partnership um, in, in, in international rugby. But I think, you know, for all the, the, the special stuff do, they do, I think you see the basics, they do so well. Um, and they complement each other in whatever they do. You know, it's not necessarily um, one do more than the other. They share the workload um, in open play and, and in set piece. And, you know, you, you pride yourself on your performance and you obviously have to lift it when you, you play against players like that. Thank you, Alan. Can I just build on that and ask about Gareth? You've you've seen what he's gone through day in day out down at the Ospreys. How impressed by you you've been by sort of his mental resilience and what what he's had to go through to get back? Because it's been really horrific what he's had to go through. Yeah, I think yeah. he hasn't been the only one in you know that period of time. But I think the length of time um, and the setbacks he's had along the way um, are credit to him and and what he's put in. Um, because this is the thing, irrelevant whether you're fit and playing every week, people only see the, the Saturdays, but I think, you know, Gareth would probably say himself, he'd probably been through a few dark periods and, you know, coming close to a return or having a setback here or there. But, you know, I was fortunate enough to, to train against him towards the end, end of last season and obviously this season. And, you know, coming back in, he's still got, got the fight and desire. And um, if anything, it's probably more so because he's had that time away from the game. So to see him back in the fold, um, and what he gives to the squad and the environment um, is, is huge. And like I said earlier, those those characteristics that you've seen a player has been through so much, um, you know, is good and it can spawn, spawn a lot of um, determination and uh, character from other people around him. And we know the style of rugby that Wayne's tried to implement with you guys since he's taken over. It, you know, it seems from the outside that Gareth would be a perfect fit for that. He hasn't had the chance yet. Is, would that be fair? And what's he brought different to the environment? Yeah, I think he, he wants to play. Um, obviously, there's a balance. Um, and I think probably for my last outing was obviously against France. Um, that was one of the best games you know we played and put in the, the whole you know mantra of what we're trying to achieve. Obviously, we came um, short on the, the final result, which is obviously disappointing. But we've got, you know, Reese and Gareth um, and Biggs can all play in, in the style and have the... The, the element of control that we need to you know approach the games and play like we, we want to play and you know what Wayne wants us to play so it's going to be you know exciting to see um, Gareth hopefully take the field and obviously have that competition for the 10 slot
And just lastly, for me, you've, you're without a lot of players this week for various reasons, player availability and a, a lot of guys, unfortunately, injured. What, when you're captain of a team in that position, what's your sort of rallying cry when your back's to the wall? Um, it's funny, the pressure's on, the, the pressure's always on uh, when you play for Wales because of the level of expectation you know, that's on us. Um, that's always the same, particularly off of you know, the spell we've had on, on recent years. Um, but ultimately, it's an opportunity for a lot of guys. Um, and they know that there are going to be players that are, more players going to come into squad, players that are going to come back from injury uh, in due course. So, you know, and, and again, you know, we know how many players Wayne has capped as well. You put that in the melting pot. So it's an opportunity for a lot of people to put their hand up. Um, and there's probably no bigger game really to do it than the first one we've got. Um, yeah, I just wanted to ask another one about um, Gareth Anscombe. Obviously, the brutal nature of his injury meant that you guys went to the World Cup quickly without him. And I guess he would have trained a lot on his own in the last couple of years. But having seen him coming back into it in the last few months, what's he himself? I mean, must have been such a tough old road for him. Yeah, well, sorry, I lost the middle bit of your question. Then. Do you just repeat that? Sorry, I was saying that the brutal nature of his injury was that he missed the World Cup and then you probably didn't see a lot of him because he was training on his own. But in the last few months when he's been coming back to it with the Ospreys, what's he been like within himself? Um, I think it, it's it's funny. Uh, you never want really to have a, a big return to play group um, in, in any squad, whether domestic or international. But I think... When someone um, comes back from a, you know adversity or a, however you want to term it, a long period out, and you can see their energy growing, their confidence growing, smile back on a face, um, that's really important to a squad as well. Um, it can feel like you're on an island and you're getting injury, etc., um, without being too cliche, cliched about it. But to, to see the the fight and bite that he's got about calling people and holding people to account um, in training. Is, is when you know someone's got the foot back in the door and they're ready to, to have crack. And he's been showing that and displaying that for the Ospreys and since we've been back in, in camp. Um, you've got a hell of a fixture list coming up, All Blacks, Fiji, Australia, South Africa. What would you like to see Wales do in the next month or so? Obviously, we, we want to win. Um, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm going to say that it comes with the performance as well. I'd like, like us to see, obviously, I featured in that, that French game and from an all-round game, other than the... <laughs> Result, we probably had you know one of the most rounded performances we had up front, and we, we used the ball. Obviously, we, we were probably indisciplined and lost towards the end of the game. But if we can package a performance somewhere near that from the start uh, and build on that and get those performances, I'm sure we'll get the results that we want. Cool. I'll let the others go. Thank you. Cheers. Hi, Alan. When when um, a lot's been good, been said and will be said about the fact you've not beaten New Zealand since 1953, but does does that have a an effect mentally when there's a team like that that you haven't beaten for so long? Funny enough, a lot hadn't been said until you asked that question, but uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm aware of the, the stats and the record. Um, but no, I think um, it, it's one of those things, like I said earlier, we probably have a, a lot of guys that probably haven't played uh, against New Zealand. Um, and, you know, again, full house. There's a lot of things, um, external things going on at the minute that are a distraction from, from the rugby. So it's been actually nice to be able to focus on the rugby and, you probably not don't get um, bogged down or those things reinforced. We're well aware of the history of the fixture and um, you know the quality of player and the succession that they've obviously always had. Um, but yeah, our focus has been again performance and, and building on um, the championship and um, the opportunity the guys had in the summer. So that needs to be our focus. Obviously, um, the odds are stacked against us, and I'll, I'll leave the, those people to deal with the odds, etc. But our focus is the performance in the rugby first and foremost, and then if we get that right, like I said to Will, um, I know we're going to be in a, in a decent position. And do you think a win is, is, is really important in terms of the next World Cup? But what could a win over the All Blacks do for you as a side? Um, well, I don't, I don't necessarily think it's, it's just them. I think obviously we're, you know, I spoke to the team, and we're, well, there's no Lions now or anything ahead. It's just. Um, the start probably of everyone's two-year cycle leading up to the World Cup. Um, there's a lot of teams and a lot of rugby that's going to go under the water. I think if we hang our hat on one one win in all those the you know international games to come, it's a dangerous position. Obviously, we're going out there to win. Um, you know, I've I've tried on many occasions, and I'm still going to try in the weekend. And I feel we've got a squad that definitely can go out there and, and um, probably present something that we haven't uh, presented before. Um, so you know, performance and then. What will come will come. Thank you. Yes. 
There's obviously a lot of talk about um, the nature of the game being outside the window, but from your perspective as a player and as a leader of the group, does it feel as important as any New Zealand game? Can can such a fixture ever be devalued? What's your kind of take on that? Um, are you? Uh, do you mean devalued because it's outside of the window? Uh, well, going off Simon's question, I'm guessing it means because it's outside the window. But um, again, we're a squad that's been selected to to play. Obviously, um, it's outside the window, so it's probably. Um, a question for someone who's a bit higher up the, the tree than myself. But when you get an opportunity to pull the, the red jersey on, um, you'll take it. I'm sure the guys that are, you know can't be selected are hugely disappointed, but they'll want to make a point, I'm sure, when they come back into the squad, obviously for the following fixtures. So just just back just back for one more, sorry. Um just wondered how you've sort of how you're feeling yourself. You obviously had to recover very quickly from your injury to get back for the Lions. Um, that was a very intense tour. Then you had a couple of games for the Ospreys. How are you sort of feeling going into this game? Because uh, you've had maybe a couple of games and that's it. Yeah, I'm, I'm good to be honest with you. I think, um, you know, I got back, I had probably a couple of weeks off of nothing, which is probably the longest time I've done nothing for in a long time. Uh, and then did a bit of intermittent training with her when I was off for the following three and a half. And then, um, you know, got back into it, the Ospreys pretty much straight away. Um, it was, it was, it's always the same a post Lions tour, or, or you know, probably more so Lions tour than World Cup. That you, you know, your window for a preseason gets a little bit shorter, and particularly because of this year for obvious reasons. Um, but now I've I've gone in and you know really been uh, looked after by the SSC team, uh, the Ospreys to make sure it's up to speed, and um, you went straight straight back into the fold really rugby wise, um, which which isn't a bad thing really. Um, probably um, could have could have done some with some uh, more time off with the family, but um, you know, it's the, the nature of the job and I'm just happy to be back in the fold. But um, yeah, I'm excited, like I say, to, to attack the autumn. And can I just conclude by asking, uh, are you happy with Mike Phillips stealing your book, Thunder, at the moment? He seems to be everywhere. I didn't know I'd done a book, to be honest with you. <laughs> How did you find that process? Good? Oh, we don't need to talk about that now. It's not a, it's not a book tour today, but thank you for the question. <laughs> All right, no worries. Cheers. Ryan and Wynn, um, with uh, with what you talked about there about this being the start of the two year cycle, does that sort of narrowing of the focus, I guess, is that quite useful, quite beneficial? Yeah, well, I think obviously you know, the domestic game will be the domestic game, and there'll there'll be injuries and you know fitness and selection things that the, the coaches have to deal with. But from a, a player that's in the fold, it's essentially um, excluding this campaign. It's four campaigns, and then it's a World Cup. Um, you know, it's two Six Nations a summer and an autumn to go, and then it's into the World Cup. So, you know, you, you and you've depending on your age experience, some people will say, Oh, it's miles away. Well, it's not really, it's you know, ne not, not necessarily on the doorstep, but it's not far away. Um, particularly in you know, sport, time go to, turns around really quick. So, I think it's not necessarily a focus, um, but you have to be aware that it's the start of the cycle. Uh, I know that sounds a contradiction in terms. But um, you have to be aware that it's the start of the cycle because it'll be here before we know it. And just in terms of the progress sort of made under Wayne Pivak and the coaching staff in terms of year on year, the, the progression you've made, is it sort of going as hoped and on track, I guess, if you look at the whole four year cycle? Um, I don't know. I think you'd have to ask Wayne and he could tell you um, the core KPIs that he was looking at. But I think from a player, um, you know, Wales has always been questioned about strength and depth and the number of players in certain positions. I think Wayne has you know, grabbed that probably, uh, grabbed that ball by the horns and the fact that he's capped so many players um, in autumns and, and summers uh, in particular. Um, so he's obviously um, setting his scene, if you like, with the player availability and the number of players at his disposal. And I guess I was I mean, tactically and, and things like that, is it just a lot easier now when you guys are coming into camp in terms of picking up where you left off and everything's um, more? Yeah, I'd, I'd, I'd say so. I think um, obviously when change happens, you don't get the, you know, the, the click of the fingers and it happens automatically. Obviously, we're still aware of um, our last autumn, which was, you know, hugely disappointing. We had a championship, we missed out on a Grand Slam. So in, in, in ways that we have progressed, there's still things that we, probably need to address and as there always will be but you know you don't want to get too far you know ahead because we know um there's always be, going to be something to to improve on but you know the championship was was decent um <clears throat> and probably the, the the number of players available now um is 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 probably pleasing to wing um, obviously being outside the window is a bit frustrating that we can't have everyone but like i say it is what it is
Thank you. Um, I just wanted to ask you about, you're very good at moving on to the next job in your career, but I just wanted to ask you really about how much the lines in your experience takes out of you physically and mentally, and then how, what your process is of trying to sort of get back on the horse for the next challenge. Um, well, I, I had a two week sabbatical, so I couldn't, probably wasn't it the toughest one really, was it? Um, but no, it's, it's always, like I said earlier, that junction after a, a Lions tour is, is, is a little bit different to a World Cup because obviously um, it's, it's not just the national team. It's, you know, every, everyone coming together, particularly with the, the season potentially starting a little bit earlier. Um, and, there, and it is a trade-off, again, like I alluded to earlier, and the fact of you potentially sometimes can have too much time off and then you're playing catch-up because you go straight into games. But I was probably, probably got it, just right really for this year because and with setting the scene of the last two years and COVID and stuff um, and I've been like I said earlier well looked after at the O's and the 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 combination of um, the Ospreys and, and Wales and how they've set my my plan up has, has really helped me so I'm looking forward really. Cool I'll leave it there we haven't even asked about a record coming up as well so we'll leave it at that. Oh I've oh, got to give you something to ask next week don't I? Yeah <laughs> thanks Alan <laughs> Great. Thank, great. Thanks, Alan Wynn. Uh, thanks, everybody.